Okay, let's see, let's see. I think in the last part I left off where we had Deku finding Dagobah Beach, but I don't think I actually had the training start. So let's go ahead and begin. What if Deku had Yin Yang release? Part 2. We start off with Deku getting up in the morning, eating breakfast, saying good morning to Inko, giving her a general idea of his plans for the day, and saying goodbye, heading off to Dagobah Beach. We see Deku in about an hour or two arrive at Dagobah Beach, where he realizes the pictures are nothing like what it actually is, or the pictures are a couple years old because there is a lot more trash than it looks like in the pictures. It's much higher, much larger, and, sp and spans a much well, bigger area, and some of it even goes into the actual ocean. Now. Deku decides that this is going to be more challenging than he thought, but if he can get this done, then he'll consider himself ready for UA's entrance exam. So he begins three months of hellish work. And yes, it takes him three months to get it done. Throughout Deku's life, from the age of I think like seven or six, whatever it was, he's been training himself physically to make himself stronger. At this point, he's wearing clothes that are, of course are weighted, but are weighted to, are equal to around 10 times Earth's normal gravity, mean, meaning he has 10 times Earth's gravity pushing him down at all times. And he moves like a normal person in this. Now, or he can move like a normal person while in those clothes. With the, well, with the added, I guess, effect of picking up the, well, the, what's it called, the um, trash, Deku's going to gain a lot of, well, strength. Not just physically, but mentally. He'll gain a lot of muscle endurance as well. And I think this would also help him do some other stuff, like isometric training. For those who don't know what isometric training is, uh, well, what it does is the main premise is trying to activate more muscle fibers. So a human can only activate naturally around, well, a third to a fifth like a third to a fifth of their muscle fibers. So from 20% to around 33-ish. Now, through training, you can activate more. Can a person handle all 100%? Probably not. Probably not. But Deku is able to handle a good portion of his muscle fibers, and he is already quite, well, physically gifted. Since he's been training his entire life, he already has what can be considered superhuman strength because of him being able to activate a high percentage of his muscle fibers, which he'd go from being uh, probably already at like 50% to being even 70%, meaning he's 30% away from being 100%. The thing is, if he can activate that much with his body, which he could easily lift, you know, a few hundred pounds easy, that means he should be able to lift these things, right? These, uh, I guess, refrigerators or he push these cars, would he be able to? Yeah, yeah, he would. So he'd be able to get some isometric training done, some strongman training, which is lifting heavy or weirdly shaped, but heavy objects. So yeah, this allows him to train his entire body to its limit every single day. And then once he's done in about three months, he does a lot of stamina training, running every single day, and probably even some swimming as well to tire himself out even more. He'd do that for about two months before he decides that he needs to prepare for actual combat and starts to do more training on his, well, on, I guess, more cardio and so on, but more of sparring, like shadow boxing, getting down the move movements and probably even doing some, what's it called, uh, he'd do shadow boxing and what's the other term, um, I'm trying to think of the other one. I can't remember, like, a, um, basically shadow boxing is where you imagine your opponent is in front of you, and you know what their attacks are, their strengths are, and so on, and you're trying to prepare to fight them. So you have to know what your strength is compared to them, and you have to, well, you have to be able to, you know, fight what you know they have. But of course, it's not going to be 100%. There's another way where instead of, you know, actual moving, you're doing is someone like a you know, you're basically meditating and then doing, I forget what that term is called, but he do stuff like that. And of course, 
he tried to do something else. He knows with being a hero, you have to be able to get around from place to place pretty easily. And sometimes with being a hero, you have to be moving and confined to areas. So, to test himself, he knows Bakugo would probably be able to do this with his explosions, and he wants to see if he could do it. Getting on top of a building without going through its stairs or getting a ladder or anything. Just on the outside of the building, getting to the top. So, we would see Deku push himself to his absolute limits, fail multiple times, and break his legs and other bones multiple times, having to heal them. We skip to the end of the 10 months of training, and Deku doing his normal workout with, well, heavy weights, calisthenics, his weighted clothing, which is equal to about 12 times gravity now, and about, we're going to say, um, and doing all of his stamina training, and what he was doing, you know, getting a bunch of mobility down and moving from place to place with his extreme, well, physical strength and speed. He'd be able to do it with about 10 times gravity, but he can't do it with the full 12. He's just too heavy and moves way, way too fast down to the ground. So when he falls, he accelerates way too fast and hurts himself. So he can do it with lighter weights, just not really heavy ones. So yeah, and I think he'd take it easy on the weights. So he'd realize I'm way better at fighting when I don't have the weights on because I'm faster, can move, you know, move faster, I'm a lot uh, lighter, so it takes some of the force away when I hit them, but the speed at which I can move allows me to, you know, hit with still a lot of force anyway. So what he, what he gets away from weight, or what he l loses with the weight from his weighted clothes, he makes up with, well, very, very high amounts of speed. So yeah. Now, let's see. He would get used to moving around from place to place to a decent way. So, I think I'd even say for the last month he wouldn't wear any weighted clothing. So, yeah, since he's not wearing any weighted clothing, that means that his body would decompress, specifically in his spine. Since he has nothing weighing him down, his body would loosen up a lot, get a, and release a lot of stress, allowing him to grow a lot. In this, he was around Bakugo's height, if not slightly taller, but in this, he's basically like an inch or half an inch taller than Ida because I think Ida's almost just barely below six foot and Deku in this is going to be six foot now by the end of the 10 months of training and by that time when that happens uh Deku and Bakugo school have released them for their summer break and then the UA entrance exam happens now when we get there we see Deku walking up and being surprised on how big the building actually is he had not really seen it in his actual life but he's seen videos and pictures of it but seeing it in person is much, much different. So we see him walking until he notices Bakugo calling out to him. Bakugo's behind him. And they start to talk for a bit, realizing that they haven't talked since summer, some of them, saying they must have been taking their training really seriously. And Bakugo, at this point, realized something. Deku is very, very tall for some reason, asking if he got surgery to be taller than him for some reason. Deku says no. Abaku says, then why you're so tall? Did you just get a really big growth spurt or something? Deku said he actually went to the hospital to see what happened because this was like overnight. So he says what he thinks happened is when he stopped wearing his weighted clothing, his body somewhat decompressed, allowing him to, you know, allowing his spine to somewhat stretch out where it should normally be. Because apparently... Uh, if his spine had been compressed any more, it probably would have pinched some of his nerves, not allowing him to move at all, and probably paralyzing him. And Baku goes like, yeah, yeah, whatever. They talk for a bit and try to get a general idea of, of you know, the other's training, and Deku says he did a lot, of, uh, a lot of weight training and some, I guess, fight training, being able to improve his fighting and so on. He said he did some mobility, but he had to get used to his well, his normal, I guess, stats without the weights weighing him down. Bakugo would ask, you know, if he could jump, like, how high could he jump in the air? And Deku says, the highest I could measure was about, well, it was about, he'd say, 10 meters-ish. Bakugo, like, 10 meters, you can jump 10 meters in the air. 
Deku says, that's the highest I recorded myself. I, don't, I wasn't going all out, but that's how high I could record myself. Not at the end of my training, but near the beginning of it when I started using less and less weight. So without weights, I'm not sure. Now, for those who don't know what 10 meters is equal to, because of course, you know, just like me, you were probably never taught to convert them. 10 meters is equal to around 32 feet. Almost 33, but I don't feel like rounding, so it's about 32 feet. A little over, you get the idea. So, we would see Deku go into the exam. Him and Baku would talk for a bit until President Mike comes on stage and explains everything, telling them that they will have a written exam, and after the written exam, they will take the practical exam. And he explains how it will work, and just like in canon, we'd see Ida come out of nowhere, talk about the, you know, fourth, you know, robot, and so on. Everything like that would go the same. Bakugo and Deku would have the same room where they would have the, well, their written exam. And, of course, Deku and Bakugo, at this point, basically just being rivals. They've pushed each other to be better and better their entire life. Meaning that their, well, their intelligence is naturally higher to see, you know, who is smarter. So, Bakugo is smarter, Deku is way smarter. And because, you know, Deku wouldn't have been focusing completely on training, but also did mental training. So... That would also, of course, be in stuff like reading, meditation, and of course, schoolwork. So he has to balance his school with his workouts, and so on, so yeah. Meaning, he would get a way, way better score, and I think, just to, be, just, just to do it, him and Baku go tie in that. So, we would see, well, them tie, but they wouldn't know it yet. Next, we go to the practical exam, and then, well... We would see them basically say bye to each other because they do split up. Now, we would see, well, we would see Deku preparing, stretching, and everything. He's one of the taller people there and is basically looking around. He's looking around and is, well, looking at his competition. He doesn't know what any other quirks are, and some of them have unique styles he you could say so he's thinking maybe that's because of their quirks he doesn't know he's just thinking that maybe he should go out all from or go all out from the beginning he could easily pace himself every once but with his high amount of stamina he shouldn't get tired it's only going to last about 10 minutes i think it does right 10 minutes yeah i think in 10 minutes but uh he says it's only going to last about 10 minutes well let's see he think well, I could pace myself a little. It's going to take a lot of stamina to what to heal myself when I take damage. So he's thinking, we'll see. So he'd go, and of course, he is one of the fastest people there. He is not wearing any weights, so of course, he is not weighed down at all. And can easily run a 50 meter dash if he wants in about, we're going to say, 3 seconds. Yes, I said 3 seconds. That is because... Well, he's not even going all out yet. Now, he would go and we would see him basically running and being faster than Ida. Ida would then go to his max and would be somewhat on par with Deku. He's not using reciprocal burst or anything, but he is on par with him with speed. Now, Ida, for a brief instance, does push his quirk or his engines higher than what they normally can do to gain a bit more power when he kicks a robot. And Deku just brute forces it. He destroys them by ripping them apart. And then he eventually realizes that maybe he should do what Ida's doing. Aim for the weak points. That's about like four minutes in. Meaning he has around less than six minutes to, you know, or, you know, just six minutes to get that done. So he starts to, well, aim for the weak points. The thing is, with all the ranged fighters there, all the robots that are, you know, in a general area have already been destroyed. So he starts looking for other areas. And decides to get on top of a building. Using what he did for training, he's able to jump from building to building, someone, you know, from side to side, to get higher and higher, using his immense physical strength and stamina to get up there, pulling himself up. He'd go from building to building until he gets decently high up and looks for more robots. He would see some, a small little group of them, mostly two and one pointers, but that's good. He can't really take on a three pointer at this point. So he just goes for the two and one pointers. He goes and 
well, of course, would get down similar to how he did in canon, or not in canon, but similar to how he got up, jumping from building to building, from side to side, slowing himself down. Now, he could just jump off and hurt himself and then heal himself, but he's trying to preserve, he's trying to, you know, preserve some stamina. So he just go from side to side, slowing himself down. Using his, you know, full speed, he's able to get, you know, to the robots who are about, you know, I'm going to say a hundred meters away, which is, for those who don't know, almost 330 feet. So I think that's right. Yeah, 330 feet. It's around there. So he'd be able to run that. If he can do the 50 meter dash in three seconds without going all out, he can go, you know, the 100 meter dash in like six seconds, and that's still without going all out. But I think wanting to get all these robots, in, or at least most of them to himself, he'd go his full speed, which is easily, you know, 50 meters in a second. And the reason it's like that is because the extreme training that Deku did with weights on, and because he did, did a lot more running, he'd also be running on sand a bit, because it's a lot harder to run on sand since the ground isn't solid and can be moved around a lot easier, meaning you don't really have a way to push on. So yeah, he could run the 50 meter dash on solid land in about a second. So it takes him about two seconds to get to the robots. You gotta realize how fast that is. So of course he's superhuman already and is able to easily, well, obliterate the robots, not only using his legs but his hands to crush them and rip them apart, specifically their legs allowing him to get quite a few points. Now, Deku would do what he did again to see if there's any more robots nearby, but instead of seeing small robots, all he sees is the zero corner, this massive robot coming towards his area. He starts running back to the gate because he's not getting hit by that. There's no way he can heal himself from any damage that that's going to cause of that because that's going to kill him instantly. So he runs, and people see him running, thinking, oh, maybe there's robots that way. And he would be running from building to building. And I think we could see him jump from the building somewhat onto basically a street, a street light or, you know, a lamppost and all that. Jump from the building to that, somewhat spin a bit, and then to the ground. Basically rolling on the ground, hitting his back, healing any damage that might have happened, draining a decent portion of his stamina, but he's still good. He continues to run. And it somewhat warns people that there's a giant robot headed for them. They say that they can take on any robot. And then they see the zero pointer and they're like, we can't take that on. And run as well. Deku's easily outspeeding them, even Ida at this point. And Ida's thinking, is that because of adrenaline? No, 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 it's not. So he's thinking that guy must have adrenaline going through him. So he's able to run like that. But then Deku would hear something. He'd hear someone calling out for help. As he hears this, he basically looks around and notices a girl trapped under rubble. She's a decent distance away, at least a hundred meters again, which Deku would easily be able to get to her in about, you know, two seconds. That's going all out, full on sprinting. He'd carry her, which would slow him down a little, but not a lot. You gotta remember, he wore weights that were equal to around, you know, 12 times the gravity of Earth and she doesn't even make it two times out of Earth. So we would see him literally basically just running with her like it's nothing. And yeah, eventually, after a few seconds, the timer goes out. Deku would actually set her down and ask if she's okay. And she would say that she, think, she thinks her leg is either broken or so on. Deku looks at it, and because he does have a healing cork, he would study, you know, the body and injuries, you know, people would receive. And he says, it doesn't look broken, it looks mostly probably sprained, but it can easily be healed as he basically touches her leg, focuses a little, and then she's healed. She notices the pain goes away after, you know, a second after Deku's done, and, well, would be able to walk easily, asking him if he has some kind of healing quirk. And Deku says, yeah, of course Recovery Girl would come over to see if she's okay, and Deku would say that he already healed her. She'd be like, ah, yes. I remember seeing your reports on the screens for the ju for the judges. You have quite a powerful healing quirk, young man. Saying so you're going to be a very good hero one day. Deku would thank Recovery Girl and would talk to Ororaka for a bit, getting to know her name is Ororaka, and Deku would say, you can call me Deku. 
She would say that's a weird name, and Deku says it's just a nickname that he's had since he was a kid. Everyone he knows, except for his mom, calls him that. And she says, okay, cool, Deku. Deku starts hearing an alarm going off on his phone, and we pull out his phone from his pocket, and she said, you had your phone in your pocket while doing this? Why? Deku says, I mean, I have stuff to do today, other than this, so I have to make sure if I'm late or not. He'd look at it and would say, ah, oh, he has to go, saying he has to help his mom with some stuff around the house, and then before that he has to do some other things, so he says he would have to go. Deku leaves, changes real quickly into other clothes, grabs and his backpack that he took with him, and would, well, start heading home. Of course, Baku would see him and would run after him, not being fat, not being fast enough to keep up without his explosions, but would tell Deku to slow down. Now, Bakugo would say, without your weights, you're pretty freaking fast. Deku says, I've noticed, and Baku says, what's the hurry? Deku says he promised his mom he'll help out today around the house, and, you know, uh, he has some other things planned for today. Bakugo says, well, I'll see you on your way, saying, I know I got the highest score anyway. Deku says there's no way, he got the highest score. Baku says in his dreams as he runs off, and Deku, well, runs right past him, and outspeeds him instantly. If there weren't people around, Baku would use his explosions, which have increased in power, it's just, without Deku around, he couldn't heal his body, meaning he had to either go to the hospital or wait for his body to heal normally, so very slowly, because he would constantly hurt himself, especially his shoulders. So it put a lot of strain on his body, specifically his arms and shoulders, so yeah. We skip about a week or two, and we'd see Deku get a mail, or a piece of mail from UA. He opens it, and, well, it's a small little disc. He's looking at it, and then, well, a bright light flashes in his eyes, and he drops it. He begins to hear a voice, a voice coming from it, and he looks at it, and then he notices a light pointing at the table. He flips it and notices, A, hey, it's a hologram. A recorded hologram of All Might. He's thinking, cool, All Might. Now, we would see All Might tell Deku that he actually tied with a young man known as Katsuki Bakugo to, you know, for the highest score. Saying Katsuki Bakugo got a very high score and you tied with him. Saying, although your quirk isn't meant for fighting and can't really be used that good in fighting other than healing yourself or others, you got a very good score, telling him, when we do the practical exam, we're looking for more than just, you know, destroying robots. We're looking for how people act in this somewhat environment and situation. Saying the main thing we're looking for other than destroying robots is how you help others. And in that, there are two ways to get points, destroying the robots and then rescue points, helping others or, of course, rescuing them like you did with, well, you know, or Rocco Chaco or whatever her name is. You get the idea. Saying, from the villains alone, you got about 38, or we're going to say an easy 40 points. So yeah, an easy 40 points. But you also got that number when saving her, because there was a danger when running out there. Saying she got stuck under rubble, and you could have been hit with rubble as well. So, putting yourself in danger... And saving her allowed you to get a good amount of points. You got about 40 points for saving her, giving you a total of 80 points for the exam. And saying, wait a minute, if I tied with Bakugo, that means he also got 80 points. And he would say, cool. At this point, he is in the living room, and Inko basically would congratulate him on getting into UA. All Might would tell him that he got into class 1A of UA. And that's where I'm going to end it off here. If you guys want more of this, tell me down in the comments. I may do more of it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye and have a wonderful time. Bye, guys.